Hi and welcome back to Grade Guide. This revision video on the digestive system is directed towards students completing the Junior Cycle Science exam as part of the Irish curriculum. Based off the NCCA learning outcomes, I break this topic down into five parts that you need to know for the exams. These include being able to draw and label the digestive system, as well as plotting the path that food takes through it. You also need to know what the four stages of nutrition are, the difference between physical and chemical digestion, and finally, what each organ of the digestive system does. In our video on the food topic, we learned that nutrition is what a living thing uses its food for, and that the reason we eat food is to obtain energy, grow and repair our cells, and to fight off illness. So what does our body do to food to make these things happen? Well, food we eat is brought through a system of organs that work together to allow us to get nutrition from our food. This system of organs is called the digestive system. Practice drawing this diagram into your copy and make sure to add the labels correctly, which we'll colour code on screen now. The labels you need to know are the mouth, salivary glands, oesophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, anus, liver and pancreas. And you can trace the pathway that food takes through your digestive system, which is sometimes called the alimentary canal. You need to know the order in which food passes through each part of the digestive system. Once food enters your mouth, it passes through the oesophagus, stomach, then to the small intestine, onto the large intestine, and then the rectum before leaving the body through the anus. So what happens food along this pathway from the moment it enters your mouth to when it makes its way to the toilet? Well, the food you eat goes through the following four-stage process. The first stage is ingestion. To ingest food means to take it into the body. Once this happens, food goes through digestion, which is the breaking down of food. Once food is broken down into small enough pieces, it then goes through the absorption stage in the intestines, where food is absorbed into the blood. Finally, the egestion stage removes any undigested food from your body. So before looking at how the different parts of the digestive system make these four stages happen, it's important to know that your body can break down food in two different ways. The first way is called physical digestion, which can be described as mechanically breaking down food. We use our teeth and the churning of our stomach to physically digest food. The second way is called chemical digestion, and this is breaking down food using enzymes. Enzymes are made from protein, and scientists refer to them as biological catalysts, meaning that enzymes are chemicals inside a living thing that speed up chemical reactions, such as digesting food. The mouth, which is the site of ingestion, also plays a role in both physical and chemical digestion. A fully grown adult has 32 teeth in their mouth, which all physically digest food. However, our teeth are not all the same. We have four different types, which we'll take a look at now. Your large front teeth, both at the top and bottom of your mouth, are called incisors, and their job is to chop, chisel, or bite into food. Think of your first bite of an apple. You use your incisors for that bite. Canines are your fang-like teeth. You have four of these, and they rip and tear into food. Premolars at the side of your mouth and the larger molars to the back both have the same function to crush and grind and chew food. Aside from digesting food with teeth, the mouth also digests food chemically with enzymes. The salivary glands, which produce saliva, also create an enzyme called amylase. This mixture of saliva and amylase go to your mouth where the amylase digests starch down chemically into a smaller product called maltose. Once food is swallowed, it goes to the next part of the system, called the oesophagus. The oesophagus is a tube made from muscle, and it takes swallowed food towards the stomach. It moves food by a process called peristalsis, which is the contracting or squeezing of the muscular wall of the oesophagus to push food further down. One way of picturing peristalsis in the oesophagus is by squeezing toothpaste from a tube. When you squeeze the top of the tube, toothpaste comes out the other end. Having fibre in your diet is essential for peristalsis to work properly. The next stop for food is the stomach. It's a muscular bag filled with acid. Rumbling or churning of the stomach physically digests food, while enzymes in the stomach acid chemically digest food down into a consistency quite like soup. Food then moves out of the stomach, where bile from the liver and enzymes from the pancreas further chemically digest it. Bile is important because it breaks down any fat content in food. 
Once food reaches the small intestine, it's now broken down into small enough pieces to go through the absorption stage. Digested food is absorbed into the blood along the small intestine, which if you could stretch it out in a straight line, would be about 7 metres long. This food moves all around your body through the bloodstream. As you can see on the screen, food can then pass from the blood and into your cells, and the mitochondria in your cells are able to produce energy from this food. We study this in more detail in the video on the respiration topic. So any food that isn't absorbed by the end of the small intestine reaches the large intestine. It's all along here that water is taken out of your food and absorbed into the blood. Anything that hasn't been absorbed into the blood by the end of the large intestine is now called faeces. And faeces is sent to the rectum to be stored until egestion can take place through the anus, the final part of the digestive system, where any undigested and unabsorbed food is removed from the body. And that describes everything you need to know about the digestive system topic for your exams. Make sure you're revised on each of the five parts outlined earlier in the video. There's lots of new terminology in this topic, so make sure you take the time to test yourself on these keywords before your exam. And that's it for this grade guide video. For more science videos like this, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Best of luck with your revision.